Tremendous season in many ways. Disappointment, of course, right at the end of it. And uh, just one more goal, one of these hitting the back of the net for Burnley. And this kit you can see here uh, could well have been gracing the Premiership. Nevertheless, it's been a good season. Let's have a look through it with Stan Turner, the second part of it anyway, starting with the game down at Crystal Palace. Palace are currently sixth. It's their lowest position for two months now. They've won just one of their five games since Steve Bruce resigned. And problems here for the Palace defence. Great stop back. Terrific save by Matt Clark. Burnley corner. Cox arriving. Clark did well. And Burnley have taken the lead. It's Ian Moore. His first goal in 14 games. And what a moment to score it. Cox was the initial threat. Clark came out, got a hand to the ball. And it was West with the header on, which caused the confusion inside the six-yard area. Goalkeeper out of position. Palace defending deep. They just couldn't get anybody out. They couldn't get anybody in a position to make a challenge. Palace have to settle for the corner. Mullins is forward. Austin inside the six-yard area, and everybody missed it apart from Friedman. And Palace have got their equaliser. Clinton Morrison. Well, Morrison took a risk playing in this game. He's been troubled with a groin injury all week. Woeful defending the ball, just spinning right across the six-yard area. And there was Morrison, just able to deflect the ball beyond Nicopolis. Greenman with the first header, Austin with the second one. And Morrison with the important one. It's 1-1. One, one. And by Roger. Rialati! Fabulous effort! What a super shot that was from Arke Rialati. Struck it so well, rising all the time. Trying to turn his pass into the direction of Karofsky. Mullins. Branch just able to get a foot in. Is ball. Now Alan Moore, he's got Briscoe to his left. And it's Ian Moore who's got Burnley's second goal. The goal famine for Ian Moore is most definitely over. Branch it was who cut out the pass intended for Friedman. Ball who picked out Alan Moore. He had Briscoe to his left, Ian Moore to his right, and it's Ian Moore who's put Burnley back in front. Neat finish across the goalkeeper. Is there any further response from Palace? And 
Realati. And Morrison. Magnificent stop. Super turn inside the penalty area by Clinton Morrison. He was also having his shirt held. You can see that. Cox was holding him, but he got the shot away. 1-2-1. One, one. Um, Ian Moore scored them both. And we played very well then. Uh, because at that time, Palace were right in the, uh, the shake-up. They were in the top half dozen. So that was a big match. And we uh, we done well then. Uh. David Healy looks to be the man who's just dropped. Trying to help. It's going to be back 10 yards. So no... Uh, There's no um, dissent or anything. I don't know what the Burnley man was thinking. He started to try it maybe. And it comes. It's a dangerous looking one in. And it's gone in. And it's a complete nightmare of a goal as far as North End are concerned. And it looks to me, Ian uh, Arthur and Oha, who got the touch. It was a wicked uh, in swinging ball. Lucas didn't come. The defenders were motionless. And after no hair, got the touch. North End nil, Burnley won. Well, there's a sloppy goal. It's better for North End. McKenna. Just will happen for North End, and Burnley will hit us on the break. Well, that should be Colin Murdoch. And he's done very well indeed. Oh, dear me. The second goal was a defensive calamity. Burnley 2, North End 0. Well, that was sloppy was the word. There was no need for the pass, Howard. He was under no pressure. He just had five minutes, uh, or two minutes with the foot on the ball. But, uh, yes, again, that's the third time now that he's going to... Yeah. And his uh, name's going in the book. But yeah, North End just need a, a spell. And he's starting to turn the game back in their favour. I think if they finally try and sit back, certainly North End have got the fire, firepower to do something. That would be a mistake on their part, I feel. Well, it was too close to the keeper. Keepers blocked it. It's a, it's a terrific strike from Paul McKenna. And that is just the answer. That's the more than we're looking for. The Paris is No, you're right. It's not been uh, quite a young man's play. Well, a good ball. Chance for Steve Basham. Oh, it must be. That's a penalty. North End have a penalty kick and Nick McCopolis must be in big trouble. He's thrown away, the ball away, and North End have a penalty. And it will be Graham Alexander. Neat play from Steve Basham. Went past his man. North End have the penalty kick. And can Graham Alexander draw his side level just before the half time break? He's facing the Burnley contingent. He's already scored two penalties this season, Graham Alexander. What will he do? He scores for Preston North End. Preston North End 2, Burnley 2. Fifteen minutes played in this second half. There's nowhere to score it. First goal. He scored. What has happened? It is a goal, but not to see what the referee was doing there. No, I guess he's second. And that was uh, well similar to the chance David Healy had in the first few seconds of the second half. But Burnley, who have been in the shell for most of the game since taking a two-goal lead, are now back in the lead. 
Well, the side were playing well at that time, and uh, Arthur scored uh, from a free kick the first one. Then uh, Glenn Little scored a nice goal. We were two up. They got it back to two each. I think one of them was a penner. They got a penner, didn't they? And then uh, Arthur scored a, a fantastic uh, individual goal, a little one-two, and uh, we finished up winning that game 3-2. It was a fantastic match, that. And Gareth uh, scored a goal late on to make it 4-2, which he chalked off. And there was no wrong with that goal.
here. That was a. Uh, they came and had a go. They had no to lose, and we were expected to win, and we won. But that one was a bit of a struggle. But you know, we got the three points, which was the most important thing at that stage.
Well, the first 20 minutes of the match, we were in the ascendancy. We played very well the first 20 minutes, and we could have scored two or three goals. And then they went down, and they had like three or four attacks, and every time they went down, they scored. Glenn missed a penalty that day, yeah. But uh, we were well and truly beaten at the end of the uh, day. Ian Moore scored a goal in the second half. It was four at half time in that game. So that was a bit of a setback for us because that was another big match. There's going to be a change of shirt here for the uh, Burnley keeper, Mikopoulos. To say a first look, it doesn't appear that the, uh, the colours are vastly different. Wimbledon in a very dark blue. And it's a light grey top now for the Greek international. Most of them over to the left-hand side. It's not a bad header, Mikopoulos pours it away, but it was already offside against Schipperley. The flag went up immediately, although there it maybe wasn't offside, but climbing by the big number nine. Just a push on the shoulder of Ian Cox. Branch away from Makanov and the cross caused problems for the goalkeeper. Boyer happy to concede the corner. Although Branch will be slightly disappointed, he couldn't find Maul there, who'd taken up a really good position. And he's won this throw in for Wimbledon possession more chances and Shipperley goes for goal with their first really decent effort but long last some um, welly in the shot goalwards and it was just creeping in I think ball with the header Grant France is winning it back for Wimbledon no real width at the moment for either side Hawkins ball in, Shipley won the header, and it's down to Connolly. The turn was good. A lot of half opportunities for Wimbledon. This was another one. He really should have been making the Greek keeper work there. Well, it, it just makes me wonder whether they know the rule correctly, which is when the ball's kicked in, uh, but I mean, he was looking at it, it was right from the goal kick that, so... But no, no. Well, that's a goal for Sheffield Wednesday, and Burnley uh, stood napping there as the ball came hurtling into that penalty area. Nick Nicopoulos couldn't get hold of it, and he seemed stranded at that point, but... Um, it's happened on 33 minutes, Sheffield Wednesday have taken the lead at Turf Moor. Yeah, well, that was one of the softest goals you'll ever see at Turf Moor there. And I think Big Nick has got to hold his hand up there and say, well, he, he could have just gathered it up and he poured it away there. And the guy followed up and knocked in the back of the net. Terrible goal, that. Yeah, half time, Oxo, Pine Pace, you name it. Pressman kicks it way past the halfway line. Branch gets a foot in. High one in the sky, but uh, Burnley, no real threat there. Kevin Ball gets his head to it, looking for Taylor. Taylor holds it up, plays it left-hand side. Good ball from Taylor, and the shot! Oh, it, oh, it's hit the bar! Alan Moore, Alan Lucky, a left foot power driver, slight deflection, Pressman beaten, clip the bar for Burnley. Well, that was some shot, wasn't it? I mean, we were just underneath that, and we could see that all the way. He fairly latched onto that one, did uh, Alan Moore, and he let fly that left foot, and it just clipped the top of the bar there. Great effort. Well, <laughs> could have made uh, a but it's you know. very disruptive. Where's he taking the throw in from, for goodness sake? Referee not really in control of this match. The ball comes in from Moore. It's a good one to Maylett. Maylett now, can he do something with this? He plays it back, and Gareth Taylor couldn't do anything with it. It was really on a plate for him, how he missed that, I goodness knows. Well, I, th I think he's been watching uh, Zola there, but uh, certainly Brad Miller did well then, pulled it back to him, but he, uh, he flicked it through the, the outside of his leg. chance to do something here for the Clarets. 
Oops, now for West. West chips it across, and a two. Wednesday defender, a foul on the defender, and the referee gives a free kick against the Clarets. But it was a foul on the Wednesday defender. Well, another chance gone by there. Referee's given a foul for this one, but uh, nice cross by uh, Dean West there, wasn't it? Yeah, nice teasing cross, nice chip. West with the throw in. Arthur no here now for the Clarets. Plays it down the centre. Looking there for Alan. Uh, Man, it's male if it's wandered over to that far side. And it's uh, here's West. West chips it in once again. Beautiful cross. It should be a goal, but no. Kevin Ball on that far post and a nice cross again from the Burnley fullback West. Well, that was a great little chip in there by Dean West, wasn't it? And uh, Kevin Ball headed across the goal. Pressman got out just close, and Ian Moore followed and tried to follow it up, but the, the, the goal kicked out. Got it. He started as though he was on fire, like, you know, and uh, I'm still looking for that today. There's a nice old chip on. Well, there's a penalty there. So the defender, deliberate handball, he went up with his hand, and now it's going to be a, a penalty for the Clarets. A chance for Burnley to get back into this game. Gareth Taylor, of course, never taken a penalty, never scored with his feet. It's Gareth Taylor to take this one for the Clarets. What a pace! He has now. Well, number one with his feet there, Gareth Taylor. A cracking penalty, and really there was no need for the handball, was there? But uh, well, he saved it. And it's, that's the first one with his feet. Well, that's Gareth Taylor's first goal with his feet, a penalty. Oh, danger for it, surely. Taylor was in there. He's given a goal kick, I think. And Pressman has finally got injured there with that challenge with Gareth Taylor. I thought Taylor was going to get two there, Ray. Well, yeah, I thought he's up for his second there. Yeah, mistake by them, really, and that let him in. Came right across the goal. He had to go for it. So did the goalkeeper. Uh, Pressman had all his experience as well. And some of this uh, shape just blown past there. And that's it. Coochie gets the winner for Sheffield Wednesday. Well... I meant in the other end, not Burnley's end. But I tell you what. Well, he stuck it away well, didn't he? That shows why they paid a million pounds for him, didn't it? You know. He gives a tour of time when we played again. Uh, when we played against Stockport, and he's done it again today, hasn't he? Well, there's still time to get a goal. Play. And uh, penalty. Arthur no here, he brings him down, I think it's Coochie, when it? he brought down, he was... He's in danger of a yellow card. He's got the yellow card, but thankfully it's only a yellow. Well, yeah, but, you know, he, he, fain, he was fain injury five minutes ago was QQ, and all of a sudden gets a through ball, and he's on to like a, a whip it there, isn't he? Arthur's brought him down, penalty. Well, seals a nail in the cock, I think that, doesn't it, really? Well, it should have been a man that may have been playing for Turf Moor, but he's done the damage this afternoon. Oh, great save. Nick saved it. And the whistle goes. That's it. We've took a defeat. Um, they scored the last push-up, push uh, Cookie. I remember that. It was a clearance. It wasn't a very good one, and the guy played it back first time down the side of Arthur. And uh, Cookie got in and scored. That was a game we should never have lost. And it cost us uh, dearly. You know, although Sheffield came and they had to go, again, they were struggling um, at the wrong end of the table, and it was a game we were expected to win. But certainly it was a game we should never have lost. But we did. Well, it breaks kindly for West Brom here. Well. 
Well, what a time to score. What a time to score. Mix up there, draw for the West Brom players, slipped it through the mood, Beresford came out, never got there. Jason Roberts whipped it around him and smashed in the back of the net there. West Brom won, Burnley nil. And there must be literally seconds to, kick, to go up to half time. Well, he's up again. Well, that's the second one up again. Well, I'll tell you what, Burnley are standing around here, so no good, put your head in your hands. Well, what a time for Jason Roberts to uh, come good. Quick as lightning again, knocking it around by Beresford there, knocking it in the far corner. And it's electric pace again, beats Burnley at the back. Casual defending, sloppy passing. Got themselves, in, got themselves in trouble there themselves, Burnley. Nobody to blame. Big tail there, back to Ian Moore. Moore. Oof. Well, good effort. Charles Taylor knocked down there, down to Ian Moore. And he tries a tremendous shot. Good save. First corner for Burnley. Well, they played tight. They played tight, you know, with the three at the back, three big lads. And uh, they had just got Roberts back. He'd been injured for a while and he was lively and we'd had quite a hard season so far he come back fresh as a daisy and he got in and he scored one of them and uh, we finished up losing that game 2-0 but to be fair we were well beaten on uh, on the night there He scored in the first half and we were, uh, yeah, we were 1 0 down at half time and we were rubbish in the first half. We had a chat at half time and they went out and we murdered them second half. And uh, Coxie scored. It was a set play, a corner, I think they put it in. Um, and then uh, Brad Mailer got away down the right and crossed the one and Weller got in and uh, last push up and scored, so that was a big win for us, that got us uh, back at it. Here's Dyer, trying to get the better of Mahere, he's 
done just that. Sheeran's waiting by the penalty spot and indeed might get his chance because Beresford spilled it. Barnard's keeping it alive and Sheeran will score. The flag has been raised. It won't count, but the drama has begun. Even if the goal doesn't stand. Well, Barnard looked bemused because it seemed that the ball was going across and not in a forward direction and maybe the offside flag against Sheeran came slightly earlier in the move. Dai went for goal, and when it came back from Barnard, Sheeran had got himself off the line, and indeed maybe he was just slightly in front of Barnard when the ball came across. Sheeran's goal in inverted commas, but he spilled it. Feather in the cap of Bruce Dyer, who got the better of his marker, Nohere. Here are the 2 once more. And it's a foul on the edge of the area, tugging on the shirt by Nohere on Dyer. And it's in Barnard territory, although Lumsden wants to take it hurriedly. Now, in his career at Oakwell and indeed at Bristol City, Barnard had a reputation of scoring free kicks from just this kind of position. And indeed, he notched one in the last minute to equalise at Turf Moor to make it 3 3. What does he have up his sleeve this afternoon? A different goalkeeper today, Nicopolis injured, Beresford in the net. The result is similar! Or maybe Beresford hadn't seen the video. He beat Nicopolis with a beauty in October. He beats Beresford with a beauty in February. Well, they've had the ball in the net once already. It was ruled offside. Nothing wrong with that one. Here's Little. Briscoe's made a run for him. Well away to the left. It's a nice ball too, a chance for Briscoe and Taylor. Well, you can't say it hasn't been coming. And in many ways, the surprise is how long it took. Half an hour. Gary Taylor makes it 1-1. One -one. And Barnsley will certainly not be in the least bit surprised that they would finally concede. Tremendous dominance, great pressure applied by the visiting team. And Gareth Taylor on the end of Briscoe's cross. And he has his 11th of the campaign. And we're back at 1-1. How crucial will that call be? Almost very crucial. And in the end, Miller pounced on it. Well, that could have gone anywhere, and Miller was just grateful to flop onto the ball. At pace, toward the goal, always dangerous. And as Mulligan tries At the start of the season, I decided to go for it. And uh, sitting here now talking about it, I might have been better sticking the way we were. Because there's no... Uh, there's no... Uh, future in scoring a lot of goals, the way it turned out for us. Because we scored 10 goals more than Norris, we better closing up shop. But uh, the Barnsley match, we played very well and we should have won it. The next one was Rotherham. They were scrapping for their lives. That was a really tough match.
And uh, now a minute's silence for the Burnley legend George Bray, who sadly died this week. He made 259 appearances for Burnley Football Club, who is on the Ever League Club. The starting out in reserve team football, George made a step up to the first team in 1938 at only 19 years of age. The outbreak of the war forced the suspension of league football in 1939. And when the Football League was resumed some eight years later, George was back at the floor, linking with Reg Atwell and Alan Bryan for the Iron Curtain defence. George then went on to play the 1947 FA Cup final for Burnley. George will be sadly missed by all. Ladies and gentlemen, and as a mark of respect for George Bray, come please stand and observe a minute's silence. As always, the minute silence immaculately observed, and it doesn't seem two minutes since I saw George Bray walking down uh, Harry Potts Way now, and he had a marvellous career, and just think what it might have been, but for the uh, war years where his career was uh, sadly dispersed. Chips it forward to West, a good ball to West, inside the box, across to the back post, well up! Oh, it was actually Taylor who headed the ball, and the keeper, Darren Ward. Line a little bit deep at the moment for obvious reasons, men on him. Grant again to that left hand side, Lee Briscoe. Briscoe's early ball in, a good one! Oh, and Taylor's header just wide of the upright, but uh, great cross from Briscoe on the left hand side, and Taylor made himself available. The other Clarets are finding room on the out on the flanks, and really, I think, no wonder that uh, Moro there looked at Gareth Taylor rather than puts his uh, hands around his head because that was a golden opportunity. Really, he was putting it into the far corner, and uh, unfortunately for him, he just picked his spot wide of the post. Well, as good running finds the ball at his feet. Oh, he turns, he does a good cross in here. And Taylor! Over the top from Gareth Taylor, but great running from Paul Weller. Took the ball, he crossed it well in a tight situation, and Taylor just over the bar. Yeah, made himself available, didn't he? It's good running off the ball, gave uh, the option to the players, and the cross comes over three times with Frank Ward's hands, and that time just over the bar. Perhaps it's fifth time lucky. Ward in goals, waiting for the team to push forward. Number 19 for Forrest, very dangerous strike, and here's Summerbay to the byline. Cross comes in from Summerbay, an open goal here. Oh, and Beresford does marvellously well. And a corner to Forrest, and they were starting the second half uh, with a view to taking the lead. And really caught us cold there, because after the Burnley free kick that uh, Ward manages to uh, cut out there, it fell forward to Airwood and a very quick ball. Played back to Briscoe, trusty left foot in, looking for Taylor, flick on perhaps, and it's clear to Glenn in the box. Still Glenn juggling away, left foot shot, own inflection over the top. But Glenn looked like set for the first goal for the Clarets this afternoon. A left foot shot which deflected over the bar, corner to the Clarets. From one end to the other, it's going to be Briscoe now to take this corner as the crowd incense there. Must be a chance of a goal here. Briscoe crosses in, off the line there from the Forest man. And it's a throw into Burnley. Get the ball, look wide, spread around, finds West out wide, looked for a runner, got it for the runner, stepped over it, and uh, Kevin Ball got the ricochet for a corner. Cross comes in! And head it up! Oh, and that's a save from Ward. And that looked like going in a on the line save, Darren Ward. So Burnley uh, looking to take the lead there. It looked like Ian Cox from our vantage point 
Uh, more is it that's down. Wood hits it first time. Cox and Harewood having a, a rare old battle, and Harewood gets the winner from that one. Harewood's going to get the opportunity to shoot, and he will do. We must score here, and it's a miss. Well, goodness me, a save in the end, I think, from Marlon Beresford, but it looked like Forrest first, definitely there. Well done, Beresford, because uh, Harewood there was going clear. His colleague took the man away, and uh, he'd opened up for him. Put it into the far corner, and Beresford probably saved with his legs, I think, and uh, let off for the Clarets. I'm going to give him a run for his money on that far side, but he's got it, he's here. The simple thing to... Oh, that's a penalty! A penalty to Nottingham Forest. 22 minutes in the second half, and a chance for the visitors here to put themselves into the lead. So there you have it, Terry. Yes, it's uh, running for the ball. I don't know if it was Cox or Arthur, and uh, Harewood managed to shrug him off. I thought it was a foul against the Clarets, and then he gets into the box there. And uh, might be a bit harsh, that, David, but we know what uh, Beresford's penalty-saving uh, capabilities are. His record is tremendous. Uh, something like 10 out of 18, I think, at the last count. And the other week, uh, the one that's... Rotherham there, I understand he nearly got his hands to the ball, so good luck here to Marlon Beresford. I think he was a bit harsh mind. Well, it's Harewood that's going to take the uh, penalty for Nottingham Forest. I think rather a harsh decision, and Harewood steps up, and that's Forest into the lead, the joy of the Forest fans away to the cricket field stand end. And that is disappointing after all the interacting play Burnley have had in this game so far and they go at goal down troops marshalled back we're coming up to 36 minutes in the second half here not long left but it only takes a second to score a goal as the former Nottingham Forest boss used to say it only takes a second to score a goal true Clarets have to do it Briscoe's free kick Taylor in the arms of Ward again, a great free kick from Briscoe, a good header from Taylor, and a save from Darren Ward. Is it going to happen? That's as far as Burnley are concerned, it will be Briscoe to take it. Floats it in, and... You're in! Goal! Arthur, King Arthur, has got the level up for Burnley. Marvellous. You're dead right, he had to float into that box and uh, they didn't attack it like they had done, perhaps a moment's hesitation. I know but after no worry there to get in and glance in and just pass the despairing time of boarding goal. Clarence, what a piece, can we go on and take it? Well, we should certainly hope so. Arthur Nohiri gets the level of it, seemed to take an age to go into the net. In fact, Darren Moore did get a hand to it, but it's a goal. And it means that it's Burnley won, Nottingham Forest won. Captain of Burnley. And Paul Cook is in motion as well, along with Armstrong. And the free header there is kicked up in the air by Sean Smith. Here's Ball once more, and it's on the deck for Taylor. And into the goal. It's 1 0 for Burnley. The Clarets in front, thanks to the former Manchester City striker, Gareth Taylor. He had a go with his head that was cleared by Smith at the second attempt. He wasn't going to miss out on. And he's cashed in here for the playoff chasing down this side.
No, crew, crew uh, you get a good game of football against them. We were playing particularly well. Gordon was uh, sitting in front of the, uh, the two centre-halves, playing extremely well, and he'd done his hamstring, and we had to, like, change it round. And I'd lost a couple of players at this stage. Steve Davis as well, he hadn't played for some time. Mitchell hadn't come in, into the equation then in a couple of suspensions. So that was a big win for us, but we deserved that that day. We played, uh, we played quite well that day. They really, uh, if they get a charge together, they're well up into the players. Cross comes in, David. And the ball headed back in. It's Mooney who tries a snapshot and Beresford a hand to it over the bar. It was a former Watford man with a, a very nicely shaved head who put the ball, well, it was Beresford that put it over the bar. A, a snapshot from the uh, former Watford man and Beresford making it. Yeah, flags going everywhere on the Bob Lord stand on that far side. The ball's played in. Cox is up there. Handball claimed, a good shot and a good save from Beresford. Goodly bouncing ball that it was. Bennett takes the kick. The ball just comes in front of his marker to head it on for Stern John. Cross is going to be a good one. It's a good one. Mooney's goal! And Birmingham take the lead. A header across from the right hand side. And that man, Mooney, Tommy Mooney for Birmingham. 1 0. He's had the confidence to come forward. Cross comes in. Headed away by Briscoe, but given the fullback who hammers it. Oh no. <laughs> Offside, you have to look at your assistant. Granger just hammers the ball, finds Westford, doesn't he? Robbie Blake. Oh! Little try and a spectacular shot, but it's over the top from him. Burnley must keep coming forward in the remaining minutes of this game. A good flick from Little, here's Weller. Can he do something with it? Get the ball in. Oh, I thought that was going in from that... Uh, would have been an impossible angle, really. Goodness me, an offside given as well. All well, I mean, Birmingham were on a roll, but that was a game where nothing went for us that night. We could have, we could have quite easily won that game. But we finished up losing at 1-0. So. Little gives it down, West Cross. That was a good move again, Rick. Yep, and like I say, they're looking pretty sharp on the boys now. Well, uh, Dean West, a good overlap there from Glenn there. And uh, they're looking a bit sharp and they have done for a, a past couple of games, honestly. Glenn with the corner there, knocking it in. Big Gareth Taylor gets a hit to it. Yes, yes, he's got a goal! Gareth Taylor scores with the header. Sneak through everybody, Burnley won in the lead after only six minutes here at the turf. Yes, it was so important to score first and we haven't done it for some time, but Gareth Taylor, Burnley's leading goal scorer, puts the Clarets 1-0 in the lead. Well, uh, I was halfway through a sentence there when big Gareth rose to that there, but he got a great header on it and a bit of power in it. And to be fair, there was a guy in the line uh, who half stopped it, but it went through his legs and crept in the back of that. I bet he feels a, a bit of a fool doing that. Like, but uh, it's you know, the all count, and it's another one for Gareth Taylor's head there. Well, that's that's not one really of tackles that you like to see, Dave. You know, as an old pro, like you know, he, he's uh, he's fairly experienced as you and Roberts, uh, and he just left his foot hanging there for uh, Dean West to kick the bottom half. And I tell you what, that's a naughty one. And who's gone down there now? Well, the big fella, Glenn Little's gone down. I think he's just winded, but he, he went down, he stayed down, and everybody seems to have rushed over to him there. Let's just hope he's uh, knocked the wind out of him there.
like I say, we know it's unfortunate. These things do happen. Um, we've got to get on with it. The players have been stood around now for a good five, six minutes, which is a long time on a football field. Really. If you don't get these on, it's pretty good. And the Norwich fans applauding uh, the departure of Glenn Little, which is very good from away support as well done Norwich City. We don't like to see this happening and uh, we know Glenn so well and it's uh, a great said he's a great guy, but hopefully, like I said, just a precaution and he'll be uh, back training with the Clarets as soon as possible. of the injured Glenn Little. So, then, uh, oh, what a great save by Perso there. That was world class, that. The ball brought the living. And I'll tell you what, Martin Perso struck a great hand out there to save that. It was a superb save, Ray, and uh, Clarets under the cosh light at the moment. That one over the top, but uh, Marlon Beresford. A one-handed save, which looks certain to go in, then Lee Briscoe finally uh, hoisted it clear. And I've got to say that this is uh, the Canaries' best spell of the half so far, and that nearly resulted in a goal for them. And I'll tell you what, Dave, that was probably one of the saves of the season you'll see on there, on there today, because the, uh, the reaction time was... Unbelievable. And uh, the ball falls to Ian Moore on the right-hand side, supporting Dean West. West comes through now on the touchline, across from him. And Kevin Ball is kept in by Blake, and the ball cleared by Norwich. Goodness me, what a let off. Well, that was a terrible miss by Bono, but a great bit of skill by uh, Ian Moore and Dean West there, wasn't they? You know, get on a fair for that uh, ball, and like you say, it's too far to make this more than 10 yards. Up. But I tell you what, it should have been Bernie Chew up there. That was a great opportunity. Skill on that right hand side. Cross comes in. Oh, and uh, yes, the goal. And it's Mark Libra. We said, or Ray said that um, he'd looked the part and he looked quick and he got the goal. But the Burnley defence courts standing still there. I mean, who was Martin? I mean, it was a great ball in and he just ghosted in there. And he's, like I say, the skill that this guy's got, no problem in controlling it whatsoever. Uh, just what we didn't want, want to happen, like I say, when you won the lot, we missed a good chance at the other end there. It could have been 2 0. We're back to one. Now we've got a game on our hands now. Uh, nine minutes into the second half, Norwich draw level. Take the three points as Briscoe takes the corner. The goal, the goal was just wide there, and uh, off the goal here, he coming up with the Burnley attack for that dead ball situation just wide of Crichton's left hand post. Another guy who's cross is powerful, very powerful, and oh, it's at the post. Good lord, Arthur No here he cleared it, and uh, Libra thought perhaps he'd done everything right there. Burnley have it with Weller, Maylet gives it for West. Weller, mail it back. And well, it's just a minute. Of well, minutes. they went ahead of ball, and uh, I'm not sure if the if the it was the, the lad's arm or the co collision of heads, but as he was coming down, the other lad was going the other way, and it was a big collision. We're both horizontal in the air, and his foot caught Glenn round about the temple. He was flat out before he even hit the ground. So that was worrying, I uh, think. And their physio was fantastic because it was right in front of the uh, ducket and he got on quick because uh, apparently his tongue had gone as well, you know. So 
then Sos got on and we got it all sorted out. But then Glenn wasn't allowed to play then, you know, and he got a bang on the head for a couple of weeks and that. Um, but the main thing is that uh, he made a full recovery. Or perhaps a knock on the head made him daft on what he already is, you know, and I'm not quite sure. Because <laughs> he is a star. But that was a game we should never have lost. See with the Barnsley game as well. Barnsley were on a run of 12 undefeated. I mean, we were going there and they still got relegated. Walsall managed to stay up. They had a fantastic run. So there's nothing easy. And Walsall's a tight, compact ground. They were scrapping for their lives. We were. I got a couple of players back uh, in the needed matches. So we finished up losing 1 0, but that was a real disappointing. Uh, Disappointing night, that. It's cleared away. Rene. Moore with his pace. Palmer's with it. He has to wait for the support. Finds it in McGregor. Ball's crossed in. Oh, he's gone wide. Palmer's going to have to be aware of the pace of Ian Moore because it was the county player manager that played Ian Moore onside in the first place. <laughs> Never ten yards. This goal takes. Oh, and the header's gone wide. Came from it was Thomas or Cox. Oh, that for a second. <laughs> Crossfield and back to McGregor. He's going to try and put one into the area. Moore is on the returning end. Oh, all sorts of mistakes, and he's got in. It's a mistake between Palmer and Dibble. A nothing ball into the box. And it's a mistake that has led to a goal scored by Barrett Taylor. Nightmare start for the Thomas, Palmer forward, Beckett couldn't get there, Moore will get the return, he'll run it, Challoner, oh and his players all up, but now, oh it's a great save, Moore, he's missed it! Wow, that should have been 2-0. Thomas will take the throw. Thomas in, Briggs with a header, and oh, he's penalised. And not more problems for Stockport County. It's taken quickly. Thomas in. Oh, and it's another effort, this time by Ball. Mr. Fax is a short one, finds Gibb. Oh, not a good ball in by Gibb. Moore. Oh, straight through. Challenger's legs. Moore's on a run. Moore's on a run. Moore's on a run. Oh, and it's over the top. 95 yards. Yeah. So typically Ian Moore, though. Brilliant pace. Very, very skilled. Moore. This is Cox. He's looking for a chance to shoot. Great goal, poor defending, great ball too from here Moore. And he uses strength and pace to go wide. Great effort across the face of Andy Dibble. And... Gibb. It's on a run, finds
finds Beckett. Beckett twisting and turning, will he get a shot in? He will. Oh, he's in the post and come out. Louis Beckett. Brilliant skill from Beckett. He did really well to get the top. It was a difficult match, difficult conditions, but I think we fully deserve to win the match. What do you think of the, f the sending off? I think it was justified. He elbowed him in the face and uh, he deserved to be sent off. And, and obviously pleased with, with your two goals that you got? Yes, I thought we played very well. It wasn't a particularly attractive game because of the conditions and the, the state of the pitch. But in fairness, most pitches are like that now. So uh, the three points are, are vitally important to us. Um, it was a good professional performance by us. I think that would be the best way to put it. And uh, it keeps you in that playoff position. You, you must be hopeful now that you are going to qualify. Well, I hope so. You know, that's, uh, we, we, we set off with an ambition to get a promotion. If we can't get in the first two, then obviously the next four offers a second chance. And at the moment, it looks like City and Wolves are uh, in pole position. So um, if we finish there, then that'll be it, it's success anyhow. It's, it's progress for us. And it gives us a second chance. So you never know what happens in those situations. Because those two you've mentioned who look like getting the automatic places, they've got a lot of money to go out and spend, haven't they, when they need it? Well, of course, you know, but I mean, that, it, it's not a level playing field when you get higher up. Even in the Premiership, it's not a level playing field. So we're aware of that and we do our best. And uh, the chairman and the board have backed me. So, you know, I have no complaints. And uh, I'm really pleased that, the, that we've won today and I'm happy for the players because they've been, uh, they've been fantastic this season. City. Yeah, it was the uh, effort from Chris Lucchetti, a man that Stan Turner had with him on his books at Bury, to the near post with Barrett Beresford collecting that one in the six-yard box. A long, long ball which will probably end up with Lucas. Oh, and panic. Now a chance on here. Moore, who tries to lob the keeper and does now. Ian Moore gives Burnley the 1 0 lead after just five minutes. Marvellous. Superb goal that was. A superb kick from Ian at Marlon Beresford. Obviously, the tight team was to catch Preston Short, David Johnson, had the pace, got the legs on it. A bit of a mess up between the defender and the goalkeeper, Lucas. And who was there to lob it over? Ian Morris, Clarence won, Preston North then nil. What a clever goal from Ian Moore. That will have done his confidence no harm at all. He's been on the bench for a few games recently. But he's back in the lineup and he's got an early goal. Burnley won. Preston North end nil. Ian Moore on five minutes for the Clarence. And Beresford takes this one way outside his goalkeeping area into the box nearly. And a chance here for Weller. He's brought down to the edge of the area. Paul Weller attacking the Preston defence. And a dangerous one for Preston to give away here. The bring Gazer on, he uh, says Ray. Preston fans were suggesting there, the Preston team rather, was suggesting that he died, but I think he was just setting himself up for the shot was Paul Weller and uh, unceremoniously dumped on his backside. Yeah, as they do, as a free kick will now come in, edge of the uh, Preston uh, penalty area here, left of centre, uh, Lee Briscoe's uh, obviously favourite with his left foot, of course. No place for... Uh, Club captain Steve Davis tonight got an injury. 
A quick return for him. And now over the top. Moore. Oh, and a good shot. Excellent. It was Grant, actually, wasn't it? Tony Grant. Yeah, Tony Grant, a good save, and if they were genuine... Alexander's header, but Alan Moore comes in with the ball for the Clarets. He cuts inside, Alan Moore slips it through to Johnson. A chance on for Johnson. And he just, well, it was on its way. And Luchetti had to scramble the ball away at the far post. Here's Tony Grant. Oops. Luchetti's foul on Ian Moore. Quickly taken free kick, and Moore putting Johnson through here. Johnson's looking lively. A goal, 2 0. David Johnson makes it firmly to Preston Nil. It was unlucky just a moment before, wasn't it, when he cleared off the line, but you can't deny that. Absolutely slug bank into the corner. Goalkeeper, no chance. That's firmly to Preston North End Nil. Then uh, I took Johnny on loan and he came in. And uh, I think that was on a magic lantern as well, and we won 2 1, which was a, a big result for us against Preston. I don't know, because Johnny and uh, Ian Moore, yeah. yeah. So we, we beat them. They got one by 20 minutes from time, but really we, we, we won fair and square. Looking for Ian Moore. Oops. Kevin Ball going in all thunders, and here's Gascoigne for Burnley. Slips it inside to Johnson. The linesman's flagging. Johnson hits the side netting. But a nice little ball through, a nice jinking ball from Gascoigne. Down side for Briscoe, Gascoigne. Inside to Johnson. Johnson foul. Well, this is Gascoigne's range here, isn't it? Let's see if him and Tony Grant can have a look at this. Grantley likes this. I mean, he hit a crack out there on Sunday there. Just so, uh, so Paul Gascoigne is going to take over from here. Gascoigne hits it. Oh, it's a good effort and a great save from Boom and a great free kick from Gaza. Well, very similar to Sunday's, wasn't it? Only Gascoigne hit it this time. So it's the other side. It's Glenn Little. West down there. Oh, a great ball through. Now, Ian Moore. Can he find Johnson? Oh, push surely. Penalty, and I think a lot of the Burnley fans did as well. It was teed up for him by Moore, and he was pushed in the back. Well, I tell you what, I can play, you know, top close Rangers, international player. I tell you what, well, that's a second corner, I think, for Burnley. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. Corner to the Clarets on this near side, the Burnley for their second corner of the game so far. A little to take the corner then. Right over to the back post. Oh, and Cox was up there! Oh! Johnson! Well, that's, that's what the speed does for you, doesn't it, dear? Very little header. Knocked by a cross by uh, Mitch. A little Johnson. In like light in there. It's in the back of the net. Tell you what, a, in the six yard box, you dare to leave him there, you. Not with that pierce. Side right channel still running at the Bradford defence, trying to shot. Great shot from Moore, good save. Johnson, who cuts it back here for Moore. Can he turn? Shoot! Oh, the goalkeeper saved it. Shoot again! Good Lord! How on earth? Two chances from Ian Moore, and it could have been, and it should have been 2 0. Last in the scenario on Sunday, of course, in the first half. That was a foul on Ian Moore. Inside the uh, Bradford penalty area, and uh, the referee having no doubt about that one. Yeah, it was obvious on Sunday the chances we could have and should have been 5 0 up at half time on Sunday, but uh, it's looking like a similar situation. Well, here's Gascoigne again, or Briscoe, I'm not sure. I, I fancy Gascoigne for this one. Yeah, I think it's uh, time we saw one uh, from Gaza as the wall appears, and little David Johnson's got behind that wall. Gascoigne. Please cause here, dear, the, the tangle of the rope. 
Gascoigne wasn't too far away from Gaza. So chances on goal for Burnley, definitely stacked for us. Bradford. Well, can he do something? A wide ball out to Moore. Ian Moore cross. And Johnson was steaming in there. It hit Johnson and went out for a goal kick. Terry and I, well, Terry's just reacted outside, he's going to man on him, Lee Briscoe. Has to flick it back. Back it goes to Mitchell Thomas in the Burnley half. And there's a real tussle match going on here with Bradley Maylett. Plus, and Briscoe, Roscoe, Peyton! Oh, my word! Spaceless. Oh, well, hey, Andy Payton nearly met it here. Terry's just said the party apparently fancy them here. What an unbelievable... He got a good effort and a, and a quite a hard chance. But... Hoisted high into the box, headed on by Ward, and Thomas was there for Burnley. Briscoe heads away, and McCall heads it back in for Bradford. And a chance here for the number 19, and oh, it's gone in. Jorgensen scores, Bradford fans go mad. We said it was coming, and it's arrived. I tell you what, leaving Burris, I couldn't keep that there, you know, even though he tried in vain there. To get on the left hand side for Burnley. Pushes inside to Peyton. Peyton looks up, squares it up for more. Laid it up. Oh no, no. It's Kevin Ball. Oh, get it in. Oh, calm the way. Goodness me. That's the first time Kevin Ball has been on target and the goalkeeper. Well, uh, I thought the opportunity presented itself for me to take Paul and uh, I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, he's a world-class player, probably one of the best players this country's ever produced. And at the worst, the Burnley fans would say, like, a fantastic footballer. And I was hoping to give everybody a lift, which it did. And uh, he, was, he was good. He was great round the place and everything about it. The, the actual match against Bradford was a rearranged match because with the injuries and the suspensions and all the rest of it, we were playing a lot of games. And in hindsight, we might have been better playing Bradford when, when we should have played them on the Saturday, but we couldn't because of the state of the pitch and everything. So that was, uh, again, it was a game I w would have expected to win. Is Javre, cross is a good one. The header was directed straight at Beresford. Jaffo coming in. Jaffo. And a firm challenge by Gascoigne. And Gascoigne's given the ball away. Here's Pesky Salido. And Paul Gascoigne can be very grateful indeed to Marlon Beresford. As you know, Warnock made the point after the game on. Tuesday evening, though, despite the fact that there's very little to play for at the moment, he couldn't fault his team's commitment. And they've shown plenty of commitment here. And love, handball was there by West. And brilliant shot there, which has produced a goal for Sheffield United. It's Philip Gialka. It's his first ever goal for Sheffield United. And what a cracker it was, too. Magnificent run forward by Gus Ulenby. Managed to get the cross in. There were appeals there for handball as West made the block. But the clearance was only as far as Yagi Alcap. And Beresford, perhaps that time unsighted, had no chance. Super strike. Forward by Page. Jaffo with the header on. To Jaffo. Oh, a fantastic goal. What a start to the second half for Sheffield United. There appeared to be no danger, but he didn't even need a look up. Beresford had no chance.
Credit to, to Javare for getting in there quickly and making the challenge. It's only his fifth goal of the season, but what a goal that was. Burnley have a passenger out there at the moment, Mitchell Thomas. And love. Fantastic strike again by Philip Yagi Elker. It just gets better and better for the 19 year old. He's the new kid on the block here. Produced a magnificent finish here. So a free kick to the Claret. It's over on that left hand side. It's going to be Lee Briscoe. Or is it going to be Gaza? It must be Gaza on that far side. It, oops, stop. Watson back another three inch. So we'll have to wait for that to happen. Will it happen or not? Gascoigne. Oh, Taylor! Goal! Burnley won! Wolves nil! Gaza's free kick. That's it. Well, he's disallowed it because everybody stood up in front of our commentary position. We thought it was a goal. I, I can only assume that the referee thinks that the uh, Taylor, when he rose to head that foul, the keeper. And I'll tell you what, if I was Michael Oates there, I'd be mightily relieved because when the cross came over there from Gascoigne, where I thought the national press were a bit unkind to him last week, by the way, by writing him off. Delivered it perfectly, keeper a bit hesitant. Taylor Rose, cleanly in my opinion, knocks it in. That's a lead off for the Wanderers, and David. Rose pick up the pace again. Well done, Mitchell Thomas, but he couldn't get hold of it. But that's a claim for offside, not given by the officials. And that's a goal given, which we feel should have been offside. An injustice done for the Clarets. I agree with the majority of the crowd. Offside. I'd like to see it again, but you don't sit on the fence. Nothing for sitting on the fence, and quite rightly so, in my opinion. Offside, but not given. And you can hear what the fans think of it, David. They're making the decision that should have been. Well, from the offset, you can tell this referee is going to be controversial, and there's just proof in the evidence. A definite offside, not given, and they are the assistant on the far side. Burnley fans are outraged at this. Yeah, there were two men, David, two, two against two, and I think the man on this uh, left-hand side was offside. The referee might have thought not interfering, but uh, I don't know, in two against two, your mind's taken by the other player. And once again, Gascoigne dispossessed for Burnley. It's not looking good at the moment as Wolves into the box again, and this could be number two. Headed off the line by Dean West, brilliant header, and Sturridge was looking for his second, and Wolves second as well. Superb, David, a yard either side of him, and Dean West wouldn't have got that all-important header, but Gascoigne made the mistake, caught in possession on the far side, and uh, Wolves broke very quickly, that was a let-off. That was a foul by Paul Butler on Gareth Taylor. Referee right on the spot on that occasion gives the Clarets a free kick. Now then, it's going to be Gascoigne again who deliver this one as good as he did the last time when Gareth Taylor actually put the ball in the net for Burnley, but uh, as we know, it didn't happen. Perhaps just two or three yards further out than he'd like, David. He'd probably have a pot. Probably likes to bend it, Paul Gascoigne. It's a good one. It's bounced before the keeper, but Michael Oakes. Had it well covered in the centre of the goal mouth there. And uh, he's going to kick eventually for the visitors. Yeah, if it goes wrong, it'd be worth uh, trying to hit the back of the net from there. But uh, the ball's still in the air. But Thomas heads in down. And oh, there's possibility danger here. Oh. As Sturridge gets the second one. 2-0 to Wolves, a disaster. I said before that he must be the buy of the season, David. 18 goals in 23, and before you know it, he's got a brace at the turf. And really, he just went towards the near post and flicked it inside. We didn't need that. We conceded what I considered to be a soft goal when it was offside. And that time, that was a soft goal for all the right footballing reasons. Well, there you have it. Could be all over. 26 minutes gone.
Clarets trail by two goals to nil. Two goals from Dean Sturridge for Wolves. Stan Turner's often fond of saying goals change games and uh, when you look at the goal that uh, uh, inverted commas the goal that Alan Taylor uh, Gareth Taylor rather scored that should have been perhaps uh, you know what might be yeah. yeah it's a free kick to the Clarets Gascoigne to take a short one square to Thomas Thomas decides to go for West as I thought he was in the first place Johnson ah, just couldn't get around him Gascoigne picks it up Gascoigne sails through him can he have a, had a bit of magic Gascoigne and he going through the shot from Gascoigne oh what an effort from Paul Gascoigne a bit of the old magic returning to the veteran midfielder Oh, sublime skill, David. Took it one way, then he just fainted and went back again. Got it onto his left foot, and I thought, here we go. Stick that into the press pipes and smoke it, as they used to say, and uh, just narrowly wide. But that's a glimpse of the Gazer of, Oin, uh, Gazer of Old, and uh, if only. They might just do it yet, yeah, you never know. We have had 30, coming up to 38 minutes gone here, and Burnley trail by two An goals. Occasion, Macopoulos from Thomas, and quickly out, Macopoulos. Yes, they're off, they're off again, good hell on that far side, just keeps that ball in play for Wolves, Kevin Ball goes in. But again, Wolves pick up the play, midway inside the Burnley half, and a great little ball in, nice turn, oh, and a finish, which is second turn on, 3-0. Lovely play. Alex Ray was involved in it a couple of times and it come through, Colin Cameron seemed to have all the time in the world to pick his spot and pick his spot he did, 3-0 at half-time. I said at the top of the uh, introduction, David, that we'd been defeated nine times previously by Wolves, 3-0, you've got to say 10 out of 10's looking on the cards at this stage. Just before half-time, Burnley nil, Wolves 3. Left-hand side, a foul free kick to the Clarets, a foul on Alan Moore. Well, did have three goals, uh, David. Two with the hand and one with the uh, sort of chest uh, side. Started like the first half, corner in the first minute. All right, Lee Briscoe will take this free kick for the Clarets then. Get a quick goal back. Oh, referee. OK, you can take it now, Brisk, and uh, comes in. Header, goal! Who is it? Uh, Ian Moore. Amazing. Yeah, Alan Moore won the free kick. Lee Briscoe delivered. It wasn't a floater. It was just at the height that you sort of want for that player. Ian Moore has only been on a minute and a half. Not even that. And Burnley have pulled one back. We've only three more to get here, David. Burnley won. Wolverhampton three. That's just what the doctor ordered. Ian Moore, second half substitute and a goal. Two more home games to uh, go after this. Gillingham next up, next Saturday. But Portsmouth, bank holiday Monday, of course. Long trip to Fratton Park. And Johnson twisting and turning. Grant inside to Moore. Nice flick. Is it going to work? Johnson! Yeah! Two! Burnley have got another back. David Johnson. Marvellous. Yeah, the chances to get it clear, haven't they? But there's some little flicks going on at the edge of the box and some quick feet in there. And he's stuck it away well when the opportunity came. Is it too late? Time will tell. And there will be some uh, injury time because the uh, trainers have been on the field, not as much as in the first half, but at least three or four times, David. Well, the thing, the thing with the Wolves uh, match was that uh, we scored a perfectly good goal, in my view, Gareth Hedder, to put us one in front of the uh, cricket field end, and the referee, for some reason, decided to chalk it off. We finished up 3-0 uh, down at half-time. We made a couple of changes. In the second half, we come out, and we got two of them back, but we couldn't just quite... Uh, we couldn't just quite uh, get a point out of it.
and that's what we should have won. We were one up and we were coasting. And to be fair, Nick made a wreck in that game and the game scored. But we were, we were in complete control of that game. Uh, I couldn't see them scoring. But never mind, it was a point. Really, we could have, we should have won. Oh, Briscoe launched it for Johnson and Johnson likes the position he likes. Johnson shoots just past the far post. David Johnson, he started early and he's looking promising already. Nice ball, perfectly weighted by Lee Briscoe. Took it into his stride, just uh, went away from him a minute, but he got it back under control, dragged it across the face of goal. And there are a couple of Burnley players that got supported him just on or around the uh, edge of the box. That's a good break, that David. And uh, I think you were mentioning that during the warm-up and going through the teams that uh, Marlon King, their, their signing from Barnet, I think it was, 20 goals to his credit this season, he'll be sorely missed by the Jills. Forward, Arthur O'Heary, Paul Shaw, tries to lob Nicopolis, just wide of his right-hand post. Could have been a dangerous one from Paul Shaw. He's a man that Burnley know what about. He's had a spell here on loan, and he's one to be reckoned with as well, Paul Shaw. At the moment, it's 1-1 on chances, just... Uh, Bounced up nicely for him, and uh, Nick, if that had been on target, I think it uh, would have crept inside the post. And consequently, Gillingham come away. One on one here, this is Paul Shaw for Gillingham. Looking at him is Dean West. Ify on Yuri, and oh, just a fraction wide from the big striker. Ify on Yuri, and Paul Shaw made the spade work on the right hand side for the Jills. Now, more finding Johnson. The quick men are up there. Johnson on the right hand side to the byline. Cuts it back in for Little, a shot from Little, blocked from about eight yards, and my goodness, that looked like it could have been a goal. Our two forwards linked up well there, didn't they? Pulled the ball back, Glenn Little hit it full, and who should it catch but uh, the man who's just come on, Richard Rose. Golden opportunity, odd lines, Glenn. Right down side, it's West, gives it back for Little. Little, left foot cross to the back post, Mitchell Thomas is there, goalkeeper's there, but, uh, well... I thought we may have blown up for that one. Shot! It, oh, all went wide. A deflection in the end. And pressure from the home side. Another corner. And Arthur Noeri still holding his head there with his hands. And that ping pong and ricocheted about from a Steve Davis block. Oh, he does well. There's Little gets round two men there. The cross will come in good from Little. Oh, the ball. Has it not gone in? It's gone in. It's got in now. Goodness me. Ian Moore claims it. Ian Moore, it could have been one of about five or six. That's uh, not going to go down as one of the greatest goals you've ever seen. Bagger telling about Ricochet's chance to clear it. The keeper nowhere when the uh, cross came in. And I'll tell you what it is, that could be an utterly priceless goal. Well, you wonder if they were going to score there. The ball was in that for absolutely ages. Ian Moore puts Clarets in the lead on nine and a half minutes into the second half. Burnley won, Gillingham nil. Just reads that one well and comes away with it for Burnley. Ooh, squares it up wonderfully well for David Johnson. Johnson to run at this Gillingham defence and Johnson getting herself. Oh, what a goal! David Johnson, Burnley two, Gillingham nil. Captain Fantastic did all the danger work, didn't he? He played him in, shoved his man off, took it into the box, had a look up, and then slammed it into the far corner under Jason Brown. 2 0. Can that take away all the nerves of the afternoon? We said if we get one, the floodgates might open. Well, at least they're beginning to trickle through, David. 2 0 to the Clarets. I uh, finished that off in fine style. As I say, the skipper Terry did all the spade work, but David Johnson, what an electric finish uh, from the Burnley striker. 2 0 to the Clarets. Here he is, Arthur. No, here he is. Beat one, beat two. Shot from him. Oh, just wide. Well, Arthur, you've uh, inspiration. The Frenchman come forward. By Gummy, nearly scored. And the crowd stand, David, in this long side. The James Augury stand uh, to Arthur there. King Arthur, as he's affectionately known, because it was a strong run, and to all intents and purposes, it looked like he chipped it over Jason Brown. What a goal that was. Something somebody told me. Anyhow, we won, and that was, that was important.
But it's getting to the stage, you know, where if we could have won at Portsmouth and then won, I mean, a draw away from home is OK as long as you win at home, four from six, that's good. But it should have been six from six. Anyhow, we beat them 2-0 and we won the game well. Although they were difficult to break down, there was no goals at half-time and the lads went out and they kept at it and we got the breakthrough. Here's Danny Butterfield looking for a runner. Michael Boldings made a great diagonal. Here he goes, he's taken on his man. Cuts inside, still going, still going. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! 1-0! Exactly what was wanted. Four minutes of play gone. Michael Balding opens up the right-hand side of the Burnley defence. They stood off him. Well, he didn't need a second invitation. Slammed low and into the corner of the net. Town go 1-0 in front. It was a good ball to him. Balding made the best of it kept the ball to his feet, came inside, and two men later, the ball is in the back of the net. What a start for Grimsby Town. Looking to turn and go, can't, the ball is still available. Pokes it forward, gets it back. That is a foul. The referee says, play on. Cook is going. Only, only uh, Bandy Butterfield, got to be, got to be now. Oh, yes, 2-0 Bradley Allen. Well, Danny Butterfield couldn't finish it off, but I know somebody who can. Bradley Allen, 2-0. Well, what have you got to say? 12 minutes of the game gone. Good Cook up again. And picking it up. Off he goes. Nicely forward. Balding on the chase. Oh, he might get a chance yet. Michael Balding. It's going to be three. It is three. Well. You cannot believe it now. Chance came out of nothing. Good ball by Cook. Michael Bolding committed the goalkeeper. 3 0. It gets better and better. Ford can't win that one. Good run by Johnson. Still Johnson, nasty, near post, and in. Man not picked up, and Paul Groves is livid. It's, it's taking the shine off it a little well, bit. Well, we were just rubbish at games during the first half. It was just like strangers, really. And uh, the young kid up front, Balding, was tossed to shreds. We were 3-0 down in no time. And then we scored. Brizza scored right at the end, which, like, you know, out of all adversity, you try and look at things and think, well, that could be an important goal. We were just one shot in the end, but that was really disappointing. Day, the gamesmanship, but it's only early in the first half. Eustace will take this one again, eventually. The line by Weller. Amazing. Header came in from Beck. And free kick. It's West now for the cloud. It's Dean West crosses in. Looking for Johnson. The goalkeeper's there to capture the ball once again. And a big goalkeeper is a brave one as well. Yeah, and he looked like he got a bang for his pains to Johnson there. And uh, the keeper very sportingly throws it out. And Weller streaking forward here. And Weller does well. Good shot, good save, good effort from Paul Weller. Absolutely a good effort, and it's got to be a decent save as that because he's turned it round for a corner, which Glenn Little, uh, rather than Libra score, I'd say a corner. And it, uh, Ian Moore had come more inside, and they go away again. David Lee Mills, back to full fitness, it would appear. It's Mills on the far side. The cross comes in, and Macopoulos gets his foot to it. Punch from Macopoulos. And Burnley under the cosh there, but a free kick given against Coventry, free kick to the Clarets, but that was dangerous from Mills breaking on this near side for Coventry City. And a very definitely needs emergency here now as Nick the Greek takes the free kick. Up goes Taylor, he's got Konzik to uh, put a match with Dean West on the far side. Inside for Weller. Weller gives it West back a first time cross in from West. It's a good one, Taylor! One now, Gareth Taylor. What an inspired substitution from Stan the Man. Westy, well.
Taylor, we just said Gareth Taylor for one into the back, and what does he do? He, he provides the one. Is that the lifeline we need, David? Tom Holtz might sing us to the playoffs. 1-0 to the Clarets. Unbelievable. Gareth Taylor, he's only been on the field a couple of minutes, and he gets the all-important goal for the Clarets. 16 for the Welshman. Oh my God, you're going to hear it's buzzing now, Turf Moor. Taylor's up with the header. Ball challenging, foot in. Johnson. Johnson in the air, of dangerous. Johnson! Just wide of the uprights. Johnson lively in the box, couldn't really hold him. And then perhaps run out of space in the end. Yes, and uh, I think it was Ian Moore who was just square, unmarked, edge of the six-yard box, but uh, David Johnson, who can blame him, uh, went for the glory of that all-important second goal. 67 minutes, uh, Gareth Taylor, just to put the record Johnson straight. Near side for the Clarets. Taylor's asking for the ball, arms raised from Gareth Taylor, Johnson still in possession, left-hand side for the Clarets. Played here for Gascoigne. Inside for Little, Little in the centre, Little going to try and unleash the shot! Oh! Johnson trying to get it, and Redmond, well, he could just hold it. My word, a great shot from Glenn, and a nice ball in as well from Gaza. Only one thing to say about that, overused expression, fingertip save, that really was. was. He uh, hammered that one, did Glenn? Again, just can't get man around him. And Peyton looks for that one as Edmund King. Oh, he makes a mess of it now then, can he do something? Johnson! Can he get in? Down he goes, foul, edge of the area. This is made to measure David for Gascoigne, you have to say that. He got it short, made a mistake earlier on, redeemed it, they didn't get it clear, he got on the ball, trying to wriggle his way through, pushed over unceremoniously, smite bang in the middle of the goals. Can this be? I hope it can, Terry, because this is a, an ideal, as you say, situation for Burnley, particularly Gascoigne to hammer this one to final, push this one to 2-0. We just hope and we pray, obviously, the big wall commentary has emerged. The referee getting the paces back, Peyton's gone in to join them. There's going to be some tussling going on there, I'm, I'm sure of that. And Gascoigne looks on, Briscoe does, so does Davis. Gascoigne takes up to hit it. Oh, what a great shot from Gascoigne, pull round the post from Hedman, and that was going in. That's what the keepers between the sticks for, David. Go on, go on, Len. Glenn on this left hand, <laughs> Glenn on this left hand side, one way down he goes, free kick. Get a boot now for Mon Conji, number 22. So a free kick to the club. It's edge of the commentary penalty area. This is surely the last gasp effort for Burnley to make it 2 0. The season might depend on this. It might, and let's just see if we can get that all-important goal. We don't know the other results, we're not bothered. We're interested in this one, Briscoe and Gascoigne again. It's Gascoigne to take it, he could bend it round that wall. And Gascoigne with it. Good effort, oh, and another good save from Medman, my goodness me. Two in a row from <laughs> Well, there was four teams. There was Burnley, there was Birmingham, there was Norwich, and... Wolves, was it Wolves? Wolves. I had Wolves were playing in a day, but four teams had to win. And as you said, the lad, four teams. The law of averages tells you four won't win. So make sure you win. Norwich had to win. You would expect them to beat Stockport. By how many, I'm not sure. Birmingham. I imagine Wolves, or was it someone else? I can't just think who it was now. Anyhow, we won. But uh, their goalie, uh, at the end, you know, when I look back on it now, he made two world-class saves from uh, Gaza from free kicks. Uh, right at the end, while I had one over. And there was numerous... Uh, I've watched that video a lot of times. And uh, unfortunately, our name wasn't on it. Because another goal would have put us in the playoffs. At any stage of the season. You know, and you can look back on lots and lots of... Uh, Lots and lots of uh, occasions, you know, where goals have been chalked off or opportunities have been missed or you give a goal away here and give a goal away there. 
So all in all, 75 points was an improvement on the past three seasons, but it wasn't enough. So we have to take it on the chin, as, as uh, galling as it is, as difficult as it is, because can't do anything about it. So oh yeah, look, I think I've got still got a, 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 a good squad of players, but whether I have enough of them is the problem, you know, because one thing that's always constant, certainly more so now, are suspensions. You know, if you look the wrong way, it's a yellow card. So you're going to certainly get suspensions. Uh, injuries are part and parcel of, um, of um, modern day football. In loss of form, uh, the best way to avoid loss of form is to have competition for places. So those are the three areas that you, that you need your squad of players for. But as I said earlier, with the, uh, with the financial implications of things, I'm, I'm still not uh, quite sure where I'm up to. I mean, I'm doing this interview with you on uh, Wednesday, the 22nd of May. Normally I'd be done and dusted and I'd have it all sorted out and looking forward to a holiday. That's not the case this time. And I, d I honestly don't think anything will move till mid-June even, maybe later. So, and then of course, um, Bradford have gone into voluntary uh, receivership. The fixtures are supposedly out on the 14th of June, I think. We'll get them at nine as an embargo till 10. Well, I don't even know if Bradford are gonna be playing. So I don't know how they can draw a fixture list up. Maybe one or two other clubs might be following suit. Who knows? And it's, uh, it's worrying really, worrying uh, for all football clubs, but my concern is Burnley Football Club. But it, one or two clubs fell in. Although you might have to make cuts, Burnley won't be in that position. Well, certainly I wouldn't have thought so, but I mean, if we have a, a two or three million pound shortfall, mm -hmm. In a season, something will have to be done about it. So if you've got a few quid spare, give me a shout. <laughs> well, some very interesting views there from uh, Stan Tennant, and it shouldn't be forgotten that uh, geographically Bradford is pretty close to Burnley. Let's hope it's a long way away in terms of the financial problems that uh, that club is having and Burnley's position at the moment. It's been a good season, disappointing season, I know, but it shouldn't be forgotten that the club has come a long, long way. Just look at the ground now in comparison to the way it was just a few seasons ago. Let's hope it's a good season again for Burnley, but in football there are no guarantees. <laughs>